It is now my pleasure to announce the first panel list discussion of the day. So help me to welcome Bertendu from Meta. And all the panelists, please join me on stage. Welcome, Bartendo. I feel that uh, you will run some sort of uh, cool kids panel discussion. So I leave up to you because I think it will be very interesting. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Bartendu. I work for Meta in the same team as Renuka, Network Infra. Our proximity to Open RAN is because of TIP. We are involved in TIP, and my role is to help TIP uh, in the regional engagements. Um, Today, in the panel discussion, our topic is global lab approaches uh, for Open RAN. And the word global is very intentional, because the panel which I'm going to invite on the stage is truly global, four people from four different countries, in fact, three different continents. And they will share the journey, what they're doing in the Open RAN lab environment, and how to scale it further. So before, without wasting time, let me start. I talked about continent. So I start with Asia Pacific. Maggie, come on the stage. She is the one who comes from Taiwan, representing ITRI. And after work, we got some chance yesterday to talk about after work. She is a mom of a six-year-old son. And I know she's going to buy some toys and Legos while going back home. Otherwise, it's a soft contract. If she will not bring the toys, the next trip is going to be very tricky. <laughs> Second, I want to invite uh, from US, uh, Julie. She is representing NTIA, uh, Department of Commerce. And uh, she's a passionate engineer by heart, but she loves traveling and exploring cities. Yesterday, she told me that whenever she go to a new city, Example, Berlin, she will make a list of places to go, and she will follow it religiously. And sometimes she can even uh, make like her jet lag uh, not work for her, and she go out and go to the places. Plus, she's a mom of four kids. The good news is all of them are graduated from college, independent, and she's enjoying her life. <laughs> Traveling. <laughs> Welcome on the stage. From UK, Simon, he uh, works for Ofcom, representing Sonic Labs today. And um, I know he's a technologist, but today he told me that he's going to visit one of the recording studios of Berlin after finishing this event. Welcome on stage, Simon. And last, not the least, <laughs> Katya. I think she doesn't need any introduction. Most of you know her. But uh, I love the passion and creativity of Katya. And I always wonder like, how she can be so creative. And yesterday, she told me she reads these comics. I don't know. Uh, it's a German name. And she still are fond of that. And all the creativity which is coming into i 14 my lab <laughs> is from there. <laughs> so welcome on stage, all of you. Uh, a little bit about me. Yeah. I, I'm a big fan of i 14 y Whatever they do, like the summit, uh, the plug fest, the collaboration they're building, the testing they're doing, and the t-shirts they get printed. <laughs> and I keep wearing this t-shirt in my office in Meta, and it attracts people, and they come to me saying, what is this i 14 y And then they are in my zone. I say, come, let's go in a room, meeting room. I'll explain you interoperability, open RAN, open and desegregation, and how it's going to change the world. So all of you should contact Katya and get <laughs> <laughs> one t-shirt like this. <laughs> so this would be part of the business model then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so coming to the topic of the labs, the global lab approach. Um, I know all of you are representing a lab from different parts of the world. Why don't we start kind of making introduction about your lab? <coughs> what, uh, what are the targets and what do you want to achieve in the field of Open RAN? And if you have a unique uh, proposition or maybe you know, uniqueness, do mention that. Uh, Maggie, from you. 
Thank you, Bartendu. Hello, everyone. This is Maggie Zhao from Yichui, Taiwan. I'm very new here, so my partners are very kind enough to let me introduce our lab first. So we're from Yichui. Yichui is a research institute in Taiwan. So we do R&D. We also do industrial promotion. So we established a 5G open network lab in 2019, which is fully sponsored by the Taiwan government. So we built out an end-to-end -end carrier grade testing environment so that we can provide the integration testing service. And uh, we are one of the tip community lab that we can provide the integration service. We can also provide the page testing. So for last year, we have successfully conduct four uh, Beijing testing, including one for the DCSG, one for the open Wi-Fi, and two for the open RAN. And for this year, we focus more on the open RAN batching testing. And currently, we also work with TIP for the blueprint, as Renuka just mentioned about the blueprint. And we focus more on an indoor small cell, the scenario 15. And besides, we also provide the 24-7 stability testing for the vendors before they deploy their solution into the field. So with all this kind of experience that's starting from this year that we work with Taiwan Mobile, which is the second largest operator in Taiwan, that we do the pre-testing based on the tip badging testing at our lab. This is part of Taiwan Mobile's procurement process for their open range solution especially for the 5G private network service. So by working with the global and the local uh, partners, that our lab is trying to serve as a neutral platform that we can provide a qualified solution to meet the operator's the requirement. Thank you. Excellent. Maybe we can go around. Um, <laughs> Julia, you can go next. Thank you, Bartendu. So I'm Julie Cub. I'm from the US Department of Commerce, National Telecommunications and Information Administration, Institute for Telecommunication Sciences. We're actually an R&D government lab out of uh, Boulder, Colorado, a lovely place to visit. We, we welcome anybody to come and see us. <laughs> Uh, we actually have been running the 2022 5G challenge and 2023 5G challenge. We're well into the 2023 5G challenge, which will end in September of this year. And it's a US Department of Defense sponsored project. We, we often take in money for, from other US government agencies to perform R&D research. And the Department of Defense has funded this effort to promote open, interoperable, vendor diverse, open RAN networks because the DOD purchases a lot of private networks. They have some tranche labs right now with open 5G equipment. And they wanted to truly see the state of the industry. And they thought the best way to do this through us was to have a prize challenge. Last year was uh, 3 million US dollars. This year is 7 million US dollars. Last year we had six competitors win prizes, uh, uh, six for wraparound um, emulator testing for C open CUDURU, and then uh, three competitors last year won prizes for complete end-to-end -end integration CUDURU uh, with the host lab UE and core. Um, and this year we're into um, our end-to-end -end testing. We had nine competitors already win prizes for wraparound emulator for we're combining CUDU this year and RU testing. Um, we're now having competitors doing the end-to-end -end system testing. And the final phase will be mobility testing. So two complete G node Bs through the uh, Cable Labs, which is a, a, an OTIC with their subsidiary carrier, Curio in Boulder, Colorado. They've been running all these tests. And we're going to do, through their core and their UE emulator, two complete G node Bs. We're going to do XN and NG testing, which we never did before. And that's um, really exciting that we're getting to that stage. Um, one of the benefits of what we've been doing for the community is we have all of our test plans. Just search up uh, 2023 5G Challenge and you can get all of our test plans downloaded um, for all stages of our competition. And we've also been providing lessons learned um, to the community for how we can use what we've learned in our 5G Challenge to benefit the world. Excellent, excellent, Julie. 
Maybe Simon, on the same sequence, do you want to introduce Sonic Labs and yeah? Sure. Yeah. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, just about, just almost good day. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm, I'm Simon Burley. So I work for Ofcom, which is the UK's independent communications regulator. And I'm here today representing the Sonic Labs, which is a joint program of work between the Digital Catapult and Ofcom that's funded by UK government. And uh, the Sonic Labs is a commercially neutral environment where vendors can collaborate and help towards identifying and resolving at an early stage the inter integration and interoperability challenges that OpenRAN could potentially pose. And so we're really here to try and help prepare these vendors for the next stage in their journey towards commercial readiness. <clears throat> So since integration and interoperability is the primary focus for our testbed environment, uh, we have also established a number of industry working groups uh, that bring together RAN equipment vendors, uh, test and measurement vendors, mobile operators, and also representation from other labs around the world. And um, uh, in addition to this, we also include uh, a number of ID8 and tech accelerator work streams that help stretch and drive the ecosystem forward. So all of these uh, 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 work streams that we're, that we're building up here in the lab capability itself really is there to sort of provide a vehicle for sharing insights and the learnings uh, and test methodologies, et cetera, all with the aim of collectively um, helping to accelerate the development and maturity of Open Run. Excellent, excellent. And now, Katya, the same question. People know about I I forty five, but still I, I, exactly. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm I'm on the lucky side because I'm I'm local here, so to <laughs> say, and you have the chance so uh, to also visit then later our marketplaces. So the I forty five lab, I mean, has of course at the core to accelerate time to market, yes, and also to uh, really foster marketable products, which can then be introduced to the uh, I mean to the network by the operators, of course. Uh, but at the same time, it's also making testing what sounds yeah, easier, faster, and uh, also uh, to pro yeah, open it up to more smaller companies as well. That is important. So therefore, uh, and you ask for what makes us special, not in the sense of better, or but we are a consortium. We are a consortium of 11 partners, so that means each of these partners contributes with a knowledge or, um, uh, yeah, with a clear contribution to make this idea happen. Yeah. And um, therefore, we provide the infrastructure, but not only that. And when I talk about making testing easier, faster, that's also about automation, all these topics which are needed to do that, but also the people to make that happen. And um, what I can say, I mean, it's all about driving the ecosystem, of course, not only our team, but then also to invite the people. And we had the chance to already conduct a few plug fests. And uh, if you're interested to learn the, the, the focus topics, there is a marketplace out there. Get in touch with the people to learn what has been done, but also what have been the challenges what have been the learnings, and how to go forward with that. Excellent. So th I think uh, this, this shows like work around Open RAN is happening all across the globe. When uh, Alex and, and, and uh, Shamit was presenting the variety and the enormous amount of work, I was very kind of pleased to see. When it comes to um, certification or badging, what do you think uh, the role of a lab can be and how it can make open ran you know how it can make open ran get deployed easy or maybe easy to consume mm. um, should we start from you yeah well, I, okay. I can take that because i also wanted i mean i talked about the plug fest but i mean our next step is really to go for permanent testing and that would build you know the foundation to go for certification badging and um, of course i mean there's always a pro and a con yeah and but certification stands also for you know credibility and uh, I think it's always the question, and we all listened well to uh, Stefan's presentation. Yes. So it is important to think about how to reduce risk, yeah. but at the same time also use certificates in a good way. So here we have three operators already on board. So we have the MOU group activities, so there is already something on the, I would say, on the right track to go forward and really agree on 
specifications um, on use cases, on scenarios, and how to build them in blueprints. Here we collaborate, of course, with TIP and ORAN Alliance. It's not about reinventing the wheel, but it's rather from this specification how to bring it on the road. And a certificate can be here an important step, which proves not only that it's working, but could also prove, for example, as an entry door or can be an entry door to procurement processes one day. So we also need to think bigger when it comes also to the, all the commercial perspectives. Yeah. And here I see really a potential, but a, a certificate can only have a value if it is accepted and really approved by everyone. Uh, I think you, you, you brought a very important point of accepting the certificate. Anything is valuable if people give value to it. And uh, maybe, Maggie, do you want to share some thoughts on the same topic of certificate? Sure. Uh, as I just mentioned that we also do the tip badging testing. So I would like to share two real cases from our lab, how we see this badging process can benefit both the vendors and the operators. So when we start to do our tip badging testing, we will discuss the test plan with the vendors. And uh, you know, for, the, for those test cases that they are not able to support, or they don't have this function ready yet. The first question they're asking is about, can I waive this case? And the second question would be, if I waive this case, can I still get a page? So you know, it feels like it's a game, and they're thinking about the game plan. How can I get the highest score with the least ever? But you know, it's not a game, it's a test, it's a validation, because all those test cases are coming from the operator's requirement. Maybe for certain, re certain reason, for example, they would like to connect with their existing network or solution, so they need to have this function so that they have this test case. So what we see is that uh, getting page is very good. But the most valuable part for this paging process is to let our vendors to take this as a preparation so that they can know how and what to enhance their capabilities sooner and earlier in order to um, meet the, the requirement of their potential customer or their potential partners. For example, I just mentioned we have two companies got the open RAM page last year, and both of these two companies has been selected by the 5G Challenger this year. So it's a very good example that how this pro paging process can help the vendors to improve their capability. And and uh, at the same time, that the requirement keep updating by the operators. For example, Tower Mobile, they do see the value of this one. So except for uh, selecting the open range solutions with us, they also decided to evaluate a new 5G core vendor with us. So they provide us the test plan, which they use for their uh, public network solutions. So, you know, there is a gap there. The test plan they gave us is about 29 test cases. But for the first round, we can only do seven, you know, seven out of 29, because the vendor can only support those seven test cases. So the vendor decided to upgrade their solution according to the requirement from Taiwan Mobile. So for now, we're still doing the testing, you're still doing so, but the number of the cases passed is increasing now. So even Taiwan Mobile is happy to see this progress. They know it won't be happening immediately, but they can see the improvement. So we really see that uh, this kind of things, the Beijing things, can help to create a very dynamic society. Excellent. Maybe a quick thought from your side also, Julie. Um, a brief pitch. Like. Okay, not too long. <laughs> yeah, so we don't take too I'm much looking time. at the clock. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so one of the things we really noticed in, in both the 2022 and 2023 5G challenge, and I use this, this quote from a boss that I had long ago, and it still applies. Um, the good thing about standards is there's so many to choose from. And, and that's really one of the struggles we had, you know, from the three GPP standards and the ORAN Alliance specifications. It's great that they're flexible and there's lots of op optional uh, features, conditional, mandatory, but it's very hard to go from that to what is the minimal base testing profile. And at, that's what I think we really need to define as a global community. First step, how, how do we get to that? Because a lot of our uh, vendors that competed, as well as test vendors, 
interpreted standards differently and they implemented things differently. So we had this very cold integration, which we call it, where people had never integrated with before and they, they found it very eye-opening to come together and they thought they were interoperable and they weren't. So, um, and also sometimes as you change different versions of specifications, you know, going from 3GPP 15.5 to 6, you might go from a, uh, an optional to a mandatory parameter and if the test vendors and the vendors interoperating didn't all use the same version and interpret it the same way, they couldn't interoperate. So we think that is the first step for each component to agree as a worldwide community, what sort of maybe the 80% testing that yeah. needs to be done for interoperability. And I and that's, we're trying to do a follow on effort and this is why I love this panel, we're trying to do a worldwide testing yeah. effort to come together as a community to agree on that. Yeah, no, I completely agree, Julie, because you know, uh, beyond a point, um, each network may have like the 20% of variance of you know, a specific demography, but 80% stuff is same. So let's test once and deploy many times. Um, maybe Simon, I can come to you with the next question which I have um, on, on innovation. So when Stefan was presenting and the numbers, you know, he, he, there's a slide which says open RAN is a bumpy road. So for sure it needs more and more innovation, not only innovation in the technology, but also in the business processes and how to make it adoptable, like how to make it accelerate. Any thoughts on what labs can do to foster innovation? Yeah, I mean, in terms of the Sonic Lab, so, you know, I've already mentioned that, it, you know, we've built a commercially neutral testbed environment, um, you know, for, uh, for vendors to come along and collaborate yeah. and test and learn. But the Sonic Labs is actually so much more than this as we play our part in trying to foster a multi-vendor ecosystem within the UK. So, for example, we have a range of ecosystem uh, engagement work streams. Uh, we also provide both technical and business support to, to vendors who participate in the Sonic Labs. And we also bring together industry leaders and experts and researchers to ideate and collaborate on open problems such as RIC use cases. So here we, we basically then share our findings and, uh, and our lessons learned with the wider industry. And, uh, we, and, and finally, we also collaborate with other like-minded governments and regulators around the world who are taking a very keen eye on the lead that we are taking uh, in, order, in, in diversifying the, UK, the UK's uh, telecoms uh, supply, chain, uh, supply chain. Excellent. And I'm sure like each of the labs <coughs> must be doing something around innovation. Do you guys want to go like around with your side? Like what exactly? Or I don't know from that side or we, we run this panel like in a different manner. <laughs> I, I am not gonna ask different question to each of you, no. but you can chime in. Me? Okay, then okay. I'll um, I think what is most important is here to see a, a potential for, for new market entry. And of course the question is how we can help here. And uh, so here once again, I think it's about you know making testing easier, easier, simpler, repeatable and um, that is a challenge i mean it's not you know just say it and it's being done but it's really we, we work on that and that is why i'm so happy that this is really a funded project also so that it's uh, supported by the by the government or partially funded and but what we can do or what we want to do is currently we have uh, put that in three categories that way. That we say we have three different setups in general. The one is the temporary setup, so for example, setting up PluckFest, uh, so uh, on a specific topic, so the ones we already had. Then the next step is here really building this permanent test setups, so building here these reference architectures and ideally agreed among the operators so that also the vendors can be sure that these are the hot topics, so yeah. to say. And then we have the third category, we call it on-demand test setups. And here we are all aware of that this uh, equipment is very expensive. So not everyone may have access to that. So there might be specific requests how to do that, combinations, so that we uh, provide that, uh, give access to that. So that is how we believe and th what we learned also from our research. We asked people, we interviewed, we really listened to them. Yep. And um, with that, to really that vendors or academics or whoever has an interest to test, 
against then the carrier grade world. This is the current focus. Yeah. But of course, if it turns out to be more successful, it could be extended. But I would say, do your homework first. Excellent. The same question to the other table. Maggie, do you want to chime in? Um, in Taiwan, that except for the testing lab environment investment, Taiwan government also have several projects to support the field trials in order to encourage more uh, scenario use cases and business models. And uh, the Taiwan government even conduct a very big uh, tri trial field in Kaohsiung, which is in the south of Taiwan. And the reason being because in that area, there, there are a lot of the vertical market cluster there. So uh, if you want to do some manufacturing test scenario that you can work with a steel company. And if you want to do some entertainment scenario that you can work with the music center or the exhibition hall. So it's very good for the company, you know, it's not just to help them to accumulate a lot of reference and uh, uh, experience. And this kind of reference is not just be, uh, to enhance their uh, UN solutions. It also helps them to get uh, to know about uh, domain knowledge. You know, for sometimes you can know what kind of the feature for certain market they are required, and what kind of function the certain market will need for that, so that they can modify, you know, test and modify their solution accordingly, or maybe they can do some customize a little bit. So this kind of uh, reference. So I can also have an example that a company, Taiwan company, they during all this process and they have been working with a US company that they work together to apply for a grant from the UK government. So apply for kind of those to, to apply for a even bigger scale of the open run trial in the UK urban area. So, you know, this kind of process that like starting, starting from the lab testing, and then we do the POC, the POC trial, and then we can work with the partners to, for the global market. So I think the lab is trying to do their best to do from the lab testing to the commercial deployment. Excellent, excellent. And Julie, do you want to say something about uh, innovation part of the Yeah, sure. So um, our parent is the U.S. Department of Commerce. So one of our missions for the U.S. is to promote economy for many folks, not just have monopolies or monolithic vendors. So I think the important work that we're doing with these labs is, you know, some of the bigger vendors can afford their own labs or they can afford their own testing. But we're talking about not tier one operators, not, you know, the big uh, vendors that supply the equipment, but the smaller, facilitating the innovators. And eventually with the RIC, you're going to get into academics as well, getting into more of the innovation. So following on what I said before about coming together as, as a worldwide open RAN, and I look at it from government lab point of view, but OTIX, TIPS, everybody coming together as a community to first define the baseline testing, maybe the 80%. Once you actually, and that's more of a paper exercise, you, you write it out. The next step is, of course, then bringing that to the test vendors. And what we've seen in our 5G challenge is we had um, Viavi last year, and this year we added Keysight. Well, the configurations on the test vendors, the, the software, all proprietary. We need to come together as a community, and the test vendors don't want another test vendor to develop it. They want a neutral party, government is that, uh, come together and come up with a standard framework to create this, this testing so that you, you're not locked into a specific vendor solution so you can port between. And then the next phase, so I look at it as three tier, then the, the next phase is where you get to the automation so that you can truly have plug and play, you could plug it into any test vendor, you can plug in any equipment, and it, and it works both for today, for backwards compatibility, you can patch it going into the future. That's where the system integrator is now, you know, does not have to be a big monolithic vendor. It can be, you know, chat GT or whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, super good, super good. So for sure, like, testing is an expensive affair, and you know, Somebody in the morning was telling about the equipment and, you know, large, like, like tier ones can have their own labs, but if you go for the t long tail of operators, 
they can't afford to have their own test beds. Um, and I know the different labs have different commercial models and getting funding from government or community or something. What are your thoughts on um, making labs self-sustainable? And uh, you know, maybe we can start from that side. This. Yeah, it's a very good question. You know, we keep asking ourselves the same question as well because, as I just mentioned, that our lab is sp fully sponsored by the Taiwan government for now. But we do think, in the long term, we need to have our own self-sustaining model. It will be more healthy for the community um, because the resources are limited even though the government's budget is, uh, is limited. So instead of investing in the same efforts, we should make those resources uh, efficiency. You know, we are talking about spectrum efficiency, energy efficiency. So we are in, even in thinking about the uh, resource efficiency. So we start to think about the uh, needs. The needs from the vendor, the needs from the operator, and maybe the needs from the vertical market owner. So how to coordinate all these needs. And then we try to identify the core value of the related stakeholder. For example, for our lab, maybe our lab's core value is about the knowledge and the experience for the testing. So maybe in the future that we can focus more on the design the testing to do the troubleshooting or maybe to do the local partner engagement. And then we can leverage the resources from other partners for the testing or for the operation if possible. For example, we are also working with the OTIC lab in Taiwan for some testing because there's no reason that two labs in Taiwan and are doing the same testing. So that is, uh, we think that the self-sustaining model is a very long way to go and uh, we are just in the very first beginning. And uh, I also look forward to hear from Katya, what's your <laughs> thoughts and suggestions yeah. about that. So you can go here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 first of all, I like your openness, how you also talk about this. Yes, when it comes to commercialization, you know, it's always an issue. Uh, money is not, you know, in the street, so and, and also it's getting tighter, the budgets everywhere. But the point is really, I mean, who benefit from that? And how to set up such a lab? And I think this is really important. You talk about the demands. But at the same time, yeah, that is good. But also make, make really transparent what is the value. And um, uh, we here at I-40 Wildlife, we need to work on... Uh, such a such a model. We do not have the recipe yet. This is how it is right now. But I think, as we have the operators here on board, that we have understood also, you know, with a wake up call in the morning. So how to collaborate closer and also use more synergies here? It is important because th all the investment, how to allocate resources best but give access to others. I know it is not that easy. It is also a new, I wouldn't call it a new paradigm, but at least a new working model. Yeah. And um, here I invite you to share your thoughts as well and how to do that best. At the end of the day, bills have to be paid. This is a matter of fact. But um, it requires a first step is a commitment to go forward and then really come up with ideas, evaluate ideas, and then go step-by-step step implementation. But at the same time, really going for, as you do, having your test, uh, gathering first experiences. But I think this is the way forward. But really, I invite you to share your thoughts on such a model, how this could work. Yeah. But we will do our homework here as well. Yeah, so uh, we, we are not going to take questions because it's time limited. I will not ask this question to you and Simon Yu because you guys are kind of funding <laughs> labs. Uh, I'll go to the next question, which is I think nobody will disagree that to make open and successful collaboration has to happen at, at a massive scale. How do you think all these different labs uh, in different parts of the world can collaborate together for a specific use case or requirement? Any thoughts on collaboration? I will leave up to you any sequence you can take, like from there, or <laughs> Simon, you can start. 
So, I mean, I mean, if I go back to, to sort of the primary focus of the Sonic Labs, it's about integration and interoperability testing. And whilst there are various lab capabilities that are sort of, you know, coming online around the world, you know, they, each of those may have a slightly different focus in terms of what they're trying to achieve and, and complete in, in, their, in their own environments. But, you know, the one thing that we all have in common, and that is, is basically building a basic open RAN system and then taking it from there. So we will all encounter those integration and interoperability challenges. So, you know, having, having you know, those forums where we can collaborate, share insights, share learnings, you know, exploit synergies on test cases and test methodologies, et cetera. You know, all of these really are sort of vital to try and, you know, help that acceleration process. So, yeah, I mean, that's something that, you know, I, I long hope will continue with the work that we're doing with, you know, some of the folks on the panel here. Excellent. And the first step we have taken, like, bringing all of you on the same stage. So first level of collaboration. Who wants to go next? I will go. Okay. So um, I'm hoping to hit up all of you. <laughs> follow on effort and we're trying to find funding as well within the US. I think the first step and and this is just my opinion so it's open for discussion from all the different federal labs. I would like to start to solve the brownfield problem, okay? Because what we've been doing for the 5G challenge is we've done standalone 5G. Well, that's great, but a lot of operators already has investments in brownfield. So, I propose um, Open RU, adding, figuring out the Open RU test plan, because that's probably the most well-defined with the open front hall, the most testing. We have a test plan we could start with. I know several of you already have test plans. OTIX and TIPS have test plans. Come together to what is the 80% for the Open RU, and then can we integrate, the, that's the first step. Can we use that to integrate it into Brownfield and, and solve the SMO problem, the management yep. problem with Brownfield. Um, I did hear from a US vendor that they're doing this already, but they're just using the management plane between the DU and the RU. What we need to figure out, that, that's a great first step, but then how do you add it in from an overall SMO perspective? Yep. If we could solve that, as a first step, as a community, then I think you would get operators getting more on board with the assurance. So that's my proposal is, and I'm hoping to hit all of you up as well as other international labs <laughs> yeah. to, to come together as a community. Julia, I know Dave Hutton sitting at the back must be very happy with this answer. <laughs> and he is gonna talk about it in the afternoon about SMOs and, and the RICs. Super good. Kathy, you want to go next? I mean, we already are in contact, so I think that is a good step. Here are some more operators. Uh, so I think, uh, here I point to you, <laughs> so um, uh, there might be some other, uh, see uh, Zvi from Orange also as well. Uh, so um, something is already going on. The next step is really sharing results more open. And um, it is a step-by-step -step approach. Good idea, um, really focus on the most urgent use cases first and then go the next steps. And really happy to have you here. I can feel the spirit. Yeah. Maggie. Yeah, I totally agree with all the three panels mentioned. As Simon just mentioned that we, four of us, we all have something in common, but we also have something different. So that is something that we can start to work with. And as Julie just mentioned, you, you already mentioned a topic that we can do. So I was thinking about that maybe we can have an action item after this panel that the four of us can start to talk yeah. about to establish your former collaboration model. So so that we can further work together to make this community growing. And uh, for the other reason, for myself, that we can able to get together again. <laughs> <laughs> this is super good. Look, th my job was so simple. I have such a great panelist with me. <laughs> and look, they have a clear cut action item after <laughs> moving out of stage. And we finished our panel exactly two minutes, 53 seconds before time. Do you want to? Any last comments or if we are open, we can take one or two questions. The, the condition is you have to come here to ask the question because of the logistics. We don't have mic in the... 
uh, whatever. These mics. I just wanted to say one thing yeah, just yeah, in, on like a personal note. So we all went to a social happy hour. I guess you couldn't make it, but, <laughs> but, but you flew in today. But uh, yeah, we all went to a happy hour and we were the last ones there. We just got along great. We talked about everything, <laughs> not just uh, not just open RAN. So we just, we really enjoy each other. So I think it'll be a good collaboration. And, and Julie, on yes. top of it, like I am the only per man with three women and you know, oh. <laughs> the happy person, you know. <laughs> Now you have one more today, but yesterday you were the only, yeah, you were the only. Yesterday. We, we take a picture with you then. Yes. So just for the record. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So I think then we call it off. Thank you very much, everyone, for being a very patient listener. Thank you. Thank you so much.